Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for Alamo City award-winning breakfast tacos served up on fresh homestyle flour tortillas. They're known for out here. It's even trademarked the trash can taco. What goes inside that one? Starts with a homemade flour tortilla, potatoes, eggs, beans, bacon, and carne guisada. And we're heating things up in the Texas Eats outdoor kitchen with the Shiner beer can chicken recipe. It is so delicious, very easy recipe to do. You're going to be a rock star when you make this at home. Plus, we head to a San Antonio bakery serving up fresh bagels, loaded sandwiches, and delicious desserts. It is the food that is passed down from the grandmothers from generation to generation. All that and more right now on Texas Eats. First stop on this foodie adventure is at a new restaurant on the Riverwalk that's serving up some over-the-top burgers and sweets. Let's go inside the Sugar Factory. Joining us now is Gil Rodriguez. He is the general manager out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us, man. Hey, no problem, man. Glad to have you. Now, right in front of us, this is what makes the Sugar Factory the Sugar Factory. This is what makes it happen right here. And how did how did this all get started? The Sugar Factory, what was the concept that started all this? Great question. And this little bad boy over here is what started it all, our couture pop. This is like an actual lollipop that you can, you said you could replace it, you right? You can replace the head of this lollipop. So it's more about buying like a lollipop holder? Yep. That's crazy. Now you have so many different things, but this one in the front, the Gold Burger. That's it right there. Over the top. Now on the menu, $150. Yes, sir. And this, you get a burger wrapped in gold. Everything gold on that bad boy. 24 karat, that's how we're rolling. What comes inside of it? How you does know, it get filled? It's a cheeseburger, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and we just drape that bad boy all in gold. That's a good looking burger. Yeah. Oh yeah. There we go, cheers to you. There you go, Boomerang. The gold burger out here, that's the bite. That's the way to do it. I got something on my face. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's I'm good. covered in gold, baby. That's good. <laughs> I've had a gold cover steak before, but never a gold burger. That is awesome. I love that when you take the bite out of it, it just covers your face in gold, which, you know, why not? That's what you're doing it for. You have all the different sweets on the side. You have that milkshake. And then you have the gold fries on there as well. I mean, feel like a king. Eat some gold, have some fun, and you know, so you could split it with somebody, grab another cocktail, and have a blast out here, because that's what it's all about. There are a bunch of different burgers on the menu. This one right here is the mac and cheese burger, bacon, tomatoes, lettuce. You got the burger patty, buns toasted on there as well, fries on the side, ketchup. Another one of their big sellers they have on the menu out here. There we go. The macaroni and cheeseburger, that's the bite. That's messy and delicious. <laughs> it's exactly what you want it to be. Mm. This right here is their chicken and waffles. You can see the waffles all made from scratch. The chicken deep fried to perfection. I'm gonna add a little bit more syrup on top of these bad boys. And look at this, it's one of their most popular dishes on the menu. I'm gonna grab this guy, go for a bite. Oh wow, look at that butter right there. That's insane, flavored down to the bone on the chicken. Nice little crunch on the outside as well. Grab a waffle. I get it. This is really, really good. I mean, it's chicken and waffles. You can't go wrong. And these cocktails are just over the top. They're still bubbling. Over the top. And when they're made, it's like dry ice is just pouring dry out. Dry ice gives it its little flavor in there. Absolutely it makes and it pop, a lot of color, a lot of booze. We also do these in non-alcoholic versions as well. Cheers to you. Salute. Here we go. Oh wow. That's actually <laughs> That's actually it's very sweet, but it's well balanced. Yep. Candy this shop. One, that's the candy shop. This is the candy shop and that is the soul man right there. Oh my gosh. These are delicious. Now this one here is the one to get. That's this is the one a to get. full Kong like ice cream sundae. That's a full Kong. <laughs> Now on top of that, you will also get an approved TikTok dance that my crew will come up and bring out for you and we just we just get it for the guests that comes in for that day. And y'all have a blast doing that. Absolutely. Everybody looks like they're having a really good Absolutely. time. Absolutely, the energy is great. We bring a lot of energy to every shift. 
Uh, we wanted to provide an experience for our guests, and, and that's why they come. And, and when they got a smile on their face, we get a smile on our face. So. That's so cool. You guys have to come out here. The Sugar Factory is now open on the Riverwalk in San Antonio, multiple locations all across the United States and in Houston, Dallas. So make sure you check them out. Look where they're going to be at, and make sure you go over there and get some of these items. There we go. Look at this. I feel like, are you kidding me here? <laughs> no, this is it right here, cowboy. All right. Cheers to you, Gal. Salute. The Sugar Factory, y'all. This is where it's at. This is awesome. <laughs> now, we're headed to Houston to check out a restaurant that's fusing Asian and Texas barbecue cuisine. The beef-loving Texans have sent me on a mission to travel all across the Lone Star State, going to some of the hottest restaurants that they featured on the new season of their hit show, Bar Request, now streaming on Hulu. And that's why we're here in Houston to go inside of Loro, which is an amazing barbecue restaurant fusing Asian and traditional Texas barbecue culture together into some outstanding dishes. Let's go see what's on the menu. Joining me now is the regional chef for Laurel, Mike Bettis. Thank you so much for joining us today, man. Yeah, thanks for coming in, man. And right in front of us, we have hits off of the menu, including some delicious beef dishes, because you know we had to. And you got some pork options as well. You also have turkey and some side items. But talk to me about Laurel. How did this all get started? You know, Tyson Cole and Aaron Franklin are partners in this concept and both fans of each other's food. And Several beers later, they decided to throw this concept together, you know, and I think it's really cool taking Aaron's, you know, Central Texas, Czech style um, barbecue and introducing, um, you know, Tyson's influence with Southeast Asian ingredients. This little steak dish right here, looks like it packs a punch though, man, a flavor. <laughs> so good, yeah. Talk to me about this, what's going on? All right, so this is our uh, prime smoked bavette. So we cold smoke it in our smoker at 115 degrees for about 45 minutes. Um, then we sous vide it with a little bit of the rendered brisket tallow. Oh. So we try to utilize all of our ingredients, cross utilize them as much as possible. Beef tallow is the rendered fat that comes off of the brisket. And they're collecting it on a pan right there in the smoker and they're adding it to dishes. They're also wiping it right on top of that brisket so when it's wrapped, it's just locked in with flavor. For us, the creative process was was, you know, how do, how do we utilize these things and, and introduce them and educate our, our team and our guests? I love that. And this is such a creative, fun way to present it as well with the shishito peppers on the side, shishito salsa on there. All right, so I'm gonna put it down, grab some chopsticks or a fork, whatever you, you're vibing with today. <laughs> what do you prefer? What I like you? chopsticks. You're you know, a chopsticks we, guy. We, okay. we love cheese and adventure here, you know, that's why we have the forks. Cheers, Cheers to you. Counts. Cheers. That's the bite. Cheers. Whoa. <laughs> Give us some love, bro. Woo! This steak is cooked so nicely, and you can see it on the fire right there. I mean, the flames are shooting up. You would think it would have a lot more char, a lot more smoke on there, but it's super delicate. And then you have that shishito salsa that's on there as well, the shishito peppers on there, some of that red onion, the cilantro. It is that bright little pop that you need that cuts through all that protein. It is so good and a great way of delicately handling that protein to the point where it's just like elevated now. It's something different and it's those fusion of cultures coming together in one plate. Talk to me about this guy right here. Because so, this one we saw getting flame grilled back there, man. This <laughs> yeah, so this is awesome. So again, utilizing our trim, this is uh, part chuck, part brisket. Then we take some of our brisket flats and chopped beef and we turn it into a brisket jam. We have a jalapeno aioli, um, some spicy pickles on there, and uh, some butter lettuce. Oh wow, okay, spicy yeah, yeah, pickles, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I love butter lettuce too, because that's just kind of a nice little pop, a little fresh bite on yeah, there as well. Yeah, it's nice. Cheers to you. Cheers, man. All right, the sandwich, the burger, that's the bite. Oh my God. This burger is so good. And once again, it's another protein that you see the fire coming up on it. So you're expecting more of like a fire kind of vibe to it. But when you take the bite, it's subtly there, but it's just so perfect. It has all that tender beef on there. It's a little blend on there as well, so you're getting some different fatty pockets. And then you get all that flavor that's added on there with that spicy pickle. Some of that lettuce on there as well. That butter lettuce is just next level tasty. It is a phenomenal bite. If you're looking for a burger, you gotta come check them out at Laura. You can't come out to a barbecue joint and not get the brisket. Can't I mean, get brisket. <laughs> king of barbecue here in Texas. Talk to me about Bar Requests. I mean, brought together by the beef loving Texans. And, you know, you guys got featured on there. And it's on the new season. The QR code's on the screen so you can watch it right now. Stream it on Hulu. But, I mean, brisket is a huge part of, of their initiative, that beef loving Texas yeah. initiative. Mm -hmm. So, talk to me about what it was like being on the show and what it means to have this brisket on the menu. 
You know, it's a lot of fun. We use Creekstone. Um, it's a big product. Aaron loves Creekstone. We love Creekstone. Um, and again, you know, really coaching and educating people on what else to do with, instead of just having like that center cut, like beautifully smoked brisket, like what do we do with all the other things, you know? And so for us, that's where we have a lot of fun with it and get to be creative and, you know, respect respect the, the muscle and the animal. Right. Yeah. And like you said, the tallow, which I've seen that you guys are using there in the kitchen, mm -hmm. it is very handy super, back there for you. Super flavorful, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's got a lot of flavor in there. And I, I love the way that you've dressed this one up. I've never seen brisket treated this way and that you're adding to it, which is really, it's brisket's always unctuous, it's fatty. Yeah. And you've already, just by looking at it, you can see that some of those vinegar pops are gonna help kind of balance out that fat. I'm excited to take a bite, y'all. <laughs> All right, I got a little bit of everything now. This looks like, a, is that a mint leaf? That is mint, oh, yeah. Come so, on. Thai basil, mint, cilantro. Oh my gosh, yeah, and then yeah. you got that chili oil on the bottom. Yep. Here we go, cheers to you. Cheers, brother. All right, that's the brisket, here's the bite. Whoa. Wow, a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> There's a reason why beef-loving Texans selected Laurel to be featured on the new season of BarbaQuest on Hulu. It's because they're doing incredible things with the beef proteins that they have on the menu. Their brisket, dressing it up with that chili oil, it's so different and it's so welcome. In the world where everybody's trying to kind of do the same thing, it's this new concept. And then you have the steak, the burgers. I mean, it's the fusion, the perfect fusion of two cultures coming together and making these delicious dishes. I love what's going on out here. Houston, Austin, Dallas, you're lucky. You got the restaurant here, plus you can watch them on TV as well. So everybody wins. Y'all, brisket, burnt, and popcorn. Come on! This is wild. Y'all are doing crazy stuff out here. I love yeah, it. Now, yeah. Laura, you're all over the place, not just Houston, right? Yeah, so our flagship is in Austin. We just opened Dallas last year, uh, and then Houston this last February. My goodness. Yeah. Dude, Mike, thank you so much, man. Make sure you check him out on Hulu. The QR code's on the screen. Beef Loving Texans have created a wonderful show, Barber Quest. They're in their new season. They have all new restaurants that you have to check out. And you know what? It's food like this that you're going to learn about even more in depth. And I'm so glad I got to come out here and try it myself and tell you about it. <laughs> Come give it a try. It's so different, it's creative, it's fun. If you love barbecue, if you love beef, this is a spot to come to. Don't forget to get the popcorn. This is just silly. I gotta go for a, do you eat this with a fork? I'm oh, gonna no, use man. my hands. hands. Okay. Go hands. Do hands. I'm gonna go hands on it. Here, you get some too. <laughs> I sure. mean, it's popcorn and brisket burnt ends. Here you go, cheers, brother. Cheers. Lauro, this is where it's at, y'all. Coming up later on Texas Eats. Get ready for Alamo City award-winning breakfast tacos served up on fresh homestyle flour tortillas. You're known for out here. It's even trademarked the trash can taco. What goes inside that one? Starts with a homemade flour tortilla, potatoes, eggs, beans, bacon, and carne guisada. And next on the show, we head to a San Antonio bakery serving up fresh bagels, loaded sandwiches, and delicious desserts. It is the food that is passed down from the grandmothers from generation to generation. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here on the north side of San Antonio to check out a deli that's making some sweets, bagels, and crazy sandwiches. Let's go inside Bubby's Jewish Soul Food. Joining me now is the owner out here at the deli, Jason Fist. Thank you so much for having us out here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for coming. And there's so much delicious food right in front of us, all made fresh right here in house. How did all of this get started? Uh, this started about two years ago when uh, we were living in Los Angeles, California, and we had been coming out here for many years to visit family, uh, my Jewish side of the family, and the folks at dinner would always say, you should really move to San Antonio and do this because we don't have this in the, in the community. What declares something to be Jewish soul food? Like, what is that to you? It is the food that is passed down from the grandmothers from generation to generation. I want to start with this sandwich right here. What's the name of it and what's inside? This is our Rachel sandwich. So our Rachel sandwich, David, is our riff on a Reuben, but with deep fried turkey, pickled onions, coleslaw, Russian dressing. Cheers to you. Cheers. That's the bite. Oh my goodness, give me some love. The Rachel sandwich with the fried turkey on the inside, kind of like a fried turkey version of a Reuben sandwich. Nice and toasted on the outside, but that crust on there, and the way that they're making everything and putting all those flavors together, especially with that Russian dressing, it's just top notch. And then this sandwich right here, 
Looks like a Reuben, but what's your twist on it? It is a traditional Reuben that we call the Blackstone Hotel. This is our uh, top shelf uh, hot corned beef, Swiss cheese, homemade Russian dressing with horseradish, yes. and our homemade sauerkraut. The Blackstone Hotel Reuben sandwich out here, that's the bite. Woo, come on, that's delicious, man. The Blackstone Hotel sandwich is the Reuben sandwich here at the deli. And on the inside, Swiss cheese, they have the corned beef on there as well. The bread on the outside, again, is that sourdough rye bread. So much flavor. And when you take that bite, it's ooey, it's gooey, it's straight out of the toaster. I mean, this thing is just rocking. You can't have a Jewish deli without having certain items. This is a great example of one of those items. Talk to me about what's going on. Absolutely, this up here has kind of become our trademark here at Bubby's. This is our bat mitzvah sandwich. The bat mitzvah is four ounces of hand cut North Atlantic lox with uh, red onions, capers, tomatoes, and then our homemade whitefish salad. And it's your choice whether or not you want to eat this as an open face sandwich or just mash it all together and eat it in one bite. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, we're about to mash this thing together. Check this out. We're just gonna put that right on top. And look at that. Cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. This is delicious. Actually, I agree, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> the everything bagel with the lox, the cream cheese, the capers, the tomatoes, and the schmear that's on there as well. I mean, this thing is so good. It has so much flavor, especially with the everything seasoning on the outside of the bagel. I mean, that's the way to get it. The different sandwiches you have on the menu, you can customize them, you can do a couple different things, but there's actually a build it yourself option as well. And that's what we have right here. This thing's a beast. This is our in-house baked challah bun. So challah bread, which you're probably familiar with, the egg bread. Oh yeah. We see twisted, we craft them into buns here to support mammoth sandwiches like this. Cheers to you. That's the bite. Mm, that is incredible. There's a lot of different bread that you can choose from on the build your own sandwich. You can also choose different meats on the inside, different cheeses, the challah bread on the outside, you get it like in a bun. And then on the inside, I went for a pound of corned beef on there. Of course, it's, it's your sandwich though. You build it however you want. You can also get a charcuterie board, but you have a fun name for it, right? Yeah, this is our charcuterie, a blend of two different fishes. And very, very popular here is our homemade deviled egg salad. This is so good. Very savory options on here. But if you're looking for something sweet, don't worry, they got you covered out here too. Starting right over here is our homemade babka. Babka is a very traditional Jewish dessert. That's a brioche uh, bread. This one is our Valencia babka, which is your deli chocolate woven throughout the brioche. Our in-house baked chocolate chip cookies. We have here our chocolate and raspberry. Our honey pecan cream cheese. Just dip it right in there. It's the perfect topping on any of those items. And this coffee right here, what, what, what was this one again? This is the Cafe this Con Leche. This is our Cafe Con Leche. Thank you so much for having us out here, you guys. Bubby's right here off Northwest Military Highway. It is fantastic. There's so many different options. Cheers to you. Cheers. Oh my God. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Houston to go inside of a barbecue joint that was just named as one of the top 10 best barbecue joints in the state of Texas. Let's go inside Truth Barbecue. Joining me now is Leonard Patella. He is the owner and pit master out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us, man. Thank you. Right in front of us, you have a tray of all the select cuts that you want when you come out here. How did all of this get started? I went to go eat barbecue in Austin, 2013 or so, when barbecue started basically gold rush back then. And everybody was waiting in line and I just got like fascinated. I tried it for the first time and I was like, wow, this is, this is not what I grew up eating. I just got obsessed with it and like, even the barbecue we cook today is not the same barbecue we cooked six years ago. And I'll be honest with you, the barbecue that you're gonna have today is probably not gonna be this barbecue that you're gonna have three years from now here, <laughs> yeah. just because we wanna make it better however we can. We gotta start with the king of Texas barbecue. That's yeah. the brisket. Yeah. I love this because you can do the brisket test yeah, on yeah. it. Check that out. I mean, it's just laying right over the finger, holding up on its own weight. You give it a little tug, look at that. It just falls right yeah. apart. Nice bark on the outside, solid smoke ring on there as well. Cheers to you the brisket out here that you've got to try. You know when you take this bite, 
that this brisket is true to Texas. It's true to the classic origins of Texas barbecue. That bark on the outside, the seasoning is just enough to give it that extra little flavor. That smoke ring, that's how you know that they're handling the meat with care when it's in the smoker and then on the inside. I mean, it just falls apart. It's super oily, it's so decadent, and then it just melts in your mouth. I mean, if you're looking for some of the best brisket in Texas, this is where you need to go. I haven't had that in a while. Great job. <laughs> I want to jump to these sausage links. So this is my favorite. This is the pepper jack. We're looking for something like with a chorizo flavor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to create like a chorizo sausage and it came out tasting like uh, a chili cheese dog. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh my God. The chorizo sausage is phenomenal. It's the best barbecue sausage link that I've had. And that chorizo flavor on the inside mixed with the cheese, the elements are so good and they work so well together. A little bit spicy, bold on the inside, creamy, and then it just smells like it has that memory that it's pulling from my childhood, that nostalgic feeling of chorizo and eggs in the morning. It is so good. You put a pickle with it, it's gonna blow your mind. Why chorizo? Why, why pick that flavor? Well, my, my father's side of the family, uh, they're Hispanic, and I grew up eating so much like Tex-Mex and Mexican <laughs> food, and like, I love, I love chorizo. Like, in the morning, <laughs> like no, nothing it, like smells better in the morning than oh, yeah. like, when you're when somebody's making chorizo, chorizo yeah. and eggs, like oh yeah. What about the other sausage? Link? That one's the jalapeno cheddar. So jalapeno that one's gonna cheddar. be a little bit more mild, but kind of like your traditional Central Texas style link. The jalapeno cheese sausage link. A little bit of pickles on the side. Here's the bite. Give me some foot on that one, bro. That one's woo, nice and creamy. Mm. Man, I'm in love. Yeah, I get it. It is the truth. This is the truth out here. So this yeah. is my this is my favorite side. This is tater tot casserole. I gotta get a little bit of this here. Get some with me here. Oh, it's a little heavy, but that is dangerous. <laughs> you eat that whole thing. Yeah. You better be taking a, taking nap, a nap. Yeah, it's nappy time. I don't know. How what about this one in the front? What cream is that? spinach. I always love like good traditional like steakhouse cream spinach. Oh yeah. Oh man. The tater tot casserole is so good. It's creamy, it has those bacon chunks in there. You got the cheese on there as well. You have a really nice texture. And then you take that bite, mix it again, maybe get some brisket in there as well. Phenomenal bite. Now, if you wanna feel like you're gonna do something healthy, you get the cream spinach, and you know, maybe it's not that healthy, but you're eating your greens, and you got some shaved Parmesan cheese on the top, and all that cream on the inside, it is a great bite. These ribs are calling our name right now. So I'm gonna grab are, the middle one. You grab that one right there and the talk ribs to me about are, these. The ribs are fantastic. If you love pork ribs, you have to try these. They're so good. Grab some of this right with me right here. The pulled pork, Truth Barbecue is where it's at. If you're looking for somewhere that has all the quintessential Central Texas barbecue elements, you can come here and get it. Good on you, brother. Thank Thanks you so much for having us out here. Thanks for coming out. That's the pulled pork. I gotta finish that with the beer. Whoa, hey yo. <laughs> Cheers to you, Ren. Thanks Thank you out, so bro. much. <laughs> Texas Eats will be right back. Come on into Circle K, grab yourself an iced coffee or a hot coffee, plus a roller grill item for only $1.23 the entire month of September. Got my iced coffee. Don't forget, during the month of September, they're launching their Harvest Spice flavor as well. Plus, when you're at Circle K, you can grab a Polar Pop, a Froster, or an iced coffee, one a day for only $8.99 a month. It is a fantastic deal. Grab yourself an iced coffee or a hot coffee any size through the month of September with one of the items off the roller grill for only $1.23. And look at this thing, I loaded up. Sauerkraut, onions, a little bit of mustard on there. Don't go talk to people after you have a bite of this thing, but I tell you what, it is delicious. Here's a bite. Texas Eats. Now we're here at the Outdoor Kitchen and joining us again here today, Jimmy Moore, brewmaster at the Spetzel Brewery. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm glad to be here, Dave. And right in front of us, a delicious chicken dish. And it, it's a lot that goes into it though, but it is really delicious and you're gonna wanna make this all the time at home. And it involves the Oktoberfest, which is something that Shiner puts out every year and is delicious. Talk to me a little bit about the Oktoberfest, what makes it special? 
Well, the Oktoberfest, uh, you know, it's a Martin style ale. It's a celebratory beer. And being Oktoberfest season, you know, we have, uh, you know, like the Oktoberfest in Fredericksburg, the worst fest, all these events coming up, celebratory uh, type events. So uh, our Oktoberfest uh, just fits right in there. Love it. And that's what we're using today with the chicken. And now to get this going, you're gonna want to brine the chicken. And you know how important that is. Yes, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the seasoning in it. <laughs> that's right. You wanna lock all that flavor in there. So you wanna get some water, put it in a big pot, boil it up with some coarse kosher salt. You wanna use some rosemary, some parsley, lemons, garlic. I also found some pickle seasoning. Throw it all into a pot, let it boil. And then once it boils, cool it down in a bath of ice. And then let that cool down in the refrigerator. And then you're gonna to wanna to get your chickens, put them in little separate containers, depending on how many you're doing. We're doing two chickens, right? So we're pouring it in. And then you're gonna want it the breast side down. That's super important because you want the breast to get all that flavor, all that juiciness, and you're gonna let that go as long as you can. Recommended 24 hours, but you can do 12 to 24 and you're gonna get a lot of good flavor out of that. Once it's done being brined, you're gonna to wanna to pull it out of the solution, rinse it off, and then dry it off really nicely, pat it dry, and then you wanna get some butter and some seasoning as well, and you're just gonna kinda of mash it into a ball. You get the compound butter, you rub it all together, and then you're gonna cover the whole chicken in that. Keep going everywhere, you wanna get every little crevice of the chicken, and then you're gonna wanna de-glove the chicken, that means you're gonna to wanna to go in between the skin and the meat, and then put all that butter on the inside. Cover that with kosher salt as well, and then you're gonna to wanna to put it right on top of a beer can that's halfway drank, that's kind of the fun part. That yeah, is. Because then you, you get to drink half of a beer, and then you're gonna put some more of that butter inside the beer. You can do it without the stand, but the stands really help. Put it in the grill. You're gonna wanna create an oven kind of in there with the grill, locking in all that heat, because you wanna get the internal temperature to at least 165. Once you hit 165, it is safe to eat, but let it go a little bit further, because that way it's gonna get a little more tender. You're breaking down a lot of those tendons, the fat in there, and then about 174, 175, pull it off, and then that's when you can let it come out. Baste it a little bit as it comes out, but it's gonna be so tender and juicy from all that brining solution. Cut it up, put it on a platter, just like we have right in front of us. Get yourself an ice cold beer, open yourself one up. You can have a tortilla, you can also have your chicken. Slice it up, it is so delicious, very easy recipe to do. You're gonna be a rock star when you make this at home. Follow the link on the screen for the recipe right now. Jimmy, thank you so much for helping me out here. Jimmy did almost all the work on that chicken. He was getting his hands on it. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Grab yourself a tortilla, Jimmy. There we go, right in there. Wrap it up, cheers to you. Cheers. Oh, that's the bite. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Thanks to our friends at the Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop for supplying us with everything that we need to get grilling and smoking out here. And if you want to barbecue like a pro, just go check them out. They're in Lotus. You have all their information on the screen right here. You can get all kinds of seasonings, sauces, cast iron pans, everything you need to be a professional in your own backyard. Coming up later on Texas Eats, Alamo City award-winning breakfast tacos served up on fresh homestyle flour tortillas. You're known for out here, it's even trademarked the trash can taco. What goes inside that one? Starts with a homemade flour tortilla, potatoes, eggs, beans, bacon, and carne guisada. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Houston, west of downtown, to go inside of a Filipino restaurant that's serving up traditional cuisine with a modern twist. Let's go inside, be more Pacific. Joining me now is Gio Kuchipin. He is the owner, founder, and operator out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, yeah, right in front of us, you brought out all of the hits on the menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah just a little bit. Huh? <laughs> just a little Not bit of it. Much. What got you into cooking? What got you into, into owning a restaurant? I met my business partner, Mark Pasquale, at the uh, University of Texas. Um, he was tired of his job. <laughs> Calls me up while I was rolling egg rolls one day. He's like, hey, hey, Gio, man, you want to open up a, a Filipino food truck? Three months later, we opened a 2011 South by Southwest, also Texas. Uh, this is the longanisa tot, so it's topped off with uh, some fresh, uh, our homemade longanisa as well as a banana ketchup. So, okay, cheers, cheers to you. Yeah, the longanisa tots with banana ketchup on top. There we go.
The banana ketchup is out of control. The original spicy is so good. It has just enough heat to give you a little bit of a kick, but it's so much flavor and it's very different. But once you try it, you're gonna wanna try it on everything. That's amazing. Yeah. Tots are super crunchy. I love all the toppings you have on here as well. Nice and creamy. This is a really nice, well-balanced dish and I love how fresh it is. You got a pork dish here that's super popular. Yeah, right? so this is the kare kare. So this is um, like in the Philippines, it'll probably be made or in a household be made with oxtail. We actually took that a step up. We actually initially used brisket because it had kind of the same uh, characteristics as oxtail. The way you would eat this dish, you get a little bit of uh, the sauce, a little bit of meat, the vegetables, and then this here's a homemade shrimp paste. It's uh, called bagaong alamang, and you put that on top of that, it kind of uh, acts like a flavored salt and really um, uh, enhances that flavor. How do you go in? Yeah. Uh, I'd probably get a uh, yeah spoon and fork and like okay. you know Filipinos kind of we don't really do like knives and stuff. Uh, <laughs> you show we, me, we, man. We spoon and fork. Here, you do it so, first, yeah. and you show me what's so, yeah, going let's on. Just, uh, probably just break off a little of this here real quick. Yeah. There you go. This looks so good. Here we go. I love that. Crispy on the top, tender on the inside. You add a little bit of shrimp paste to it. It's been sitting in that sauce, so it just has so much flavor, and it has a little bit of green beans on the bottom, the bok choy on there as well. It is a really good dish and very shareable. And now this one's grabbed my attention. Yeah, yeah, this one I is, mean, uh... this one you could just smell. <laughs> when it came out, yeah. when, I, when you're all making it there in the kitchen, it's just like this overpowering scent. Like, you want to go into the kitchen and kind of follow it. Yes, yes, yes. What's going on with this dish? So this is um, a, our Filipino barbecue. Usually Filipinos will make barbecue with, like pork or chicken. Uh, we took it up a notch by using a galbi, so a short rib cut, and using that special marinade that we have, served with some spicy vinegar and some pickled red onions, kind of. Go on in. All right, grab yeah, a piece with it. me. Let's do this, man. I want to go in. I want to get a little bit of yeah, for sure. pickled red onion on there. Dip it in. Cheers to you. Yes, sir. This looks absolutely fantastic. That's the bite. <laughs> Give it some love, babe. Yeah, Woo! That's the one, man. Wow! The flavor on that one. If you want to blow your mind, you have to get the Filipino barbecue. It is so good. Charred on the outside, super tender on the inside. Soy sauce, brown sugar used on there, a little bit of citrus. It just breaks all that down. It becomes insanely tender. Falls right off the bone. Now it comes forward to an order, but I highly recommend getting more orders because you're going to want to eat a lot of it. You know, you have cocktails over here because you got to wash it down with something. And you have a whole full bar right here. And you're doing this crazy. You got a whole tower drink right here. Yeah, Talk to me about that. Man, so yeah, on brunch, uh, we actually serve those on Saturday, Sunday, um, or even every, any day of the week, really. But, uh, so it's two bottles uh, of two bottles champagne. Two yes. bottles champagne, and then you're like mixing in a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of mango into mm -hmm. this thing. Yeah. It's like a super mimosa. And then you got the nozzle on the bottom. You're going to feel like you're drinking yeah, something healthy, yeah. like Gatorade or something, right? Yeah, you right? definitely like want to tea. bring like four to five friends to share that one, with, <laughs> which are a lot of our food is like that kind of meant to share. Yeah. Filipinos are all about family, so. Thank you so much, man. Everything out here, you guys, is phenomenal. You also have to get dessert. We have the hala hala right here, a traditional Filipino dessert. And you want to mix all those items that are up in here. I mean, how many items? There's a lot of stuff going yeah, on, Yeah, right? there's about like six or seven components to that. And you top it off there with that uh, evaporated milk. I want to definitely take a bite of that one. I'm going to pour you up over here. Be More Pacific started in Austin here in Houston. You guys got to come check them out. It's a modern approach to traditional Filipino cuisine. Exactly. And as far as like our, our main goal, our goal is to introduce uh, basic Filipino flavors to the masses. So. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. This is fantastic. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in San Antonio on the northwest side to go inside of a taco joint that's making some incredible food, including their trash can taco. Let's go inside, tacos and salsa. Joining me now is Angela Favarado. He is the son and general manager out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Well, thank you for being here. You have all the goods on the table right here. And how did all of this get started? Well, we started uh, back in 94 in Corpus Christi under a different name. It's called Moody's Taquitos. And from then, we moved to San Antonio, opened three other restaurants. And then in the last 10 years, when we started Tacos and Salsa, we've grown to about three locations now. 
All right, you have a lot of tacos, but you have one on the menu. It's like what you're known for out here. It's even trademarked, the trash can taco. What goes inside that one? The trash can taco, well, it starts with a homemade flour tortilla. It's made with potatoes, eggs, beans, bacon, and carne guisada. Now, what I want to show off, though, is that you guys can also get pretty crazy with the hot sauces, right? This right here is a special hot sauce we only make once every six months. It's our habanero ghost recipe, except we make it with scorpion pepper sauce. Oh my gosh. Here, put it on both. Come on, we're doing oh, it. Oh man. Cheers to you. There it is, the trash can taco, that's the bite. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, there's some love. Ooh. The trash can taco is delicious. It's all the flavors, all the combinations of every element you want. That fresh flour tortilla on there as well. It's so soft and tender. It is fantastic. The carne quesada that's on the inside, that gravy has that sauce on there. You have the scrambled eggs, the potatoes, the beans, the bacon, the cheese. You add whatever salsa you want. It's just a fantastic taco. What's going on with this one? This is the barbacoa tostada. It's our own creation. Starts with a baked corn tortilla fresh refried beans, lean barbacoa, an over medium fried egg, blessed with salsa ranchera, and a scoop of avocado on top. We got some lime, we gotta use it, put it on top, dress them up. These things look absolutely fantastic. And look at that, super sturdy, nice and crunchy on the bottom. Cheers. Cheers. All right, that's a bite. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. That's what I'm talking about. It gets all over your face. The barbacoa tostada is made with lean barbacoa meat. You have that egg on there that's fried. Really nice, because you got that yolk still on the inside. You have that big old mound of guac on top, beans on the bottom, that toasty, toasty tostada on the bottom. So it's having a nice crunch on there as well. You can add salsa, you can add a little bit of lime to this one to step it up. But you're gonna want to order at least two of these bad boys. Now, the alambre taco. And what goes inside of that one? Grilled steak, it's all inside skirt steak. Crispy bacon, grilled onions, jalapenos, and jack cheese all melted together. Oh my goodness. It's incredible. I want to add a little bit of this fresh pico in here because you got a big bowl of it. All right, cheers. The alambre out here at Tacos and Salsa, that's the bite. Mm. <laughs> oh wow. Woo! The alambre taco, it has all those veggies on the inside that are sauteed, nice crunch to them. The meat, super flavorful as well. Then you have the cheese on that fresh flour tortilla. It is a great combination of flavors. You can add whatever you want on this one. I put a little pico on mine, it just makes it even better. You also could go fresh out here. You get a little healthy. What's going on with this bowl? Yeah, if you're trying to watch your figure or eat a little bit healthier, we have health conscious items. This is the chicken quinoa bowl. And what goes inside this one? It starts with chicken breasts, baby spinach, black beans, hot quinoa, and a scoop of avocado, and a little bit of queso fresco on top. Yeah, I'm eating a salad with a spoon. Don't judge me. Here we go. That's a bite. <laughs> That's money. That's good. If you're feeling like going a little bit more healthy than normal, right, you can get the quinoa bowl. It has that grilled chicken on the inside, quinoa, baby spinach on there, black beans, some cheese, a very refreshing bite. All right, last but not least, a burrito that's just loaded to the brim. What's going on inside of this one? This is the carne asada burrito. It's got grilled steak, refried beans, rice, cilantro, cheddar cheese, and a little bit of uh, tomato and lettuce in there. Angelo, you rock, you guys. Tacos and salsa, there's a reason why they won Best Breakfast Tacos in San Antonio. The food is absolutely delicious. Family owned and operated. This is where you got to come out to. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Thank you so much for having Thanks us, man. Thanks for coming, man. Thank That's you. That's the bite. Oh my. Come on, that's the best bite. Don't go anywhere, Texas Eats will be right back after the break. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information on all the restaurants that you've seen, plus a map, just go to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Texas Eats TV, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday right here on KSAT 12 at 10 o'clock in the morning, because this is how Texas Eats.